good. Okay. Bell ringer for today. All right, here we go. What are three major types of government that was discussed yesterday in class? Three major types. We're going to go into uh, branches of those major types soon. But what are the three major types of government? All right, any more time? We good? Okay. So let's go over this. The major types of government that we discussed yesterday in class. What's one of them? What is one of them here? Box, go ahead, man. All right, so we have a, what is that, absolute? Okay, what, what is that, an autocracy? 
Yeah, so an autocracy, good job. So an autocracy is what then, Alex? Go ahead. Yeah, dictatorship. One person has control of the government. They make all the decisions. They create all the laws. They uh, control the military. All right. They make all the economic decisions. If they wanted to, they can provide public services for the people. Okay. Um, providing public safety, it's all up to that one person. So in autocracy, all the power is gained and, and derived from one person. Okay, good. All right. What's another one? What is another one we went over yesterday? Go ahead, Woodward. Oligarchy. oligarchy. Good job. What is an oligarchy? Government Yeah, good job. So an autocracy is one person. Oligarchy is multiple people. Okay, it might be a group of five, three, whatever it might be. And uh, mostly the members of this oligarchy is a wealthy, noble status, right? They might be famous politicians. They might be wealthy individuals that own um, very wealthy businesses, I guess you could say. All right. So an oligarchy is a group of people that make all the economic decisions, make the legislation, the laws, so on and so forth. That, that small group of people controls the government and it controls that state, right? Good. And then what's the last one we went over? What is the last one? Alex, go ahead, man. Democracy. Yeah, good job. What is democracy? Yeah, government run by the people. The people have a say of what goes on in that country, okay? Um, they, they have a decision of what laws, legislation that they want enacted within their community, within their said state, right? Good. And once we get to a republic, um, a republic kind of falls on elected officials, right? Elected officials that make the decisions for the people. Okay, good. Is there any questions on the three main types of government? We have an autocracy. We have democracy. And we have an oligarchy. Okay. All right. So we're going to branch off of that a little bit. A lot of these these uh, these governments we're about to talk about branch off those three main types. Okay. Uh, for now, I'd like to go over vocab. So there's just four of them I want to go over with you today, and then uh, we'll move on from that. Remember Friday. Okay. Friday we had the citizenship test due. So some of you turned that in. Great job. Okay, also, current events, Devin and Alex, all right? Don't forget that for current events. So the terms for today, let me pull them up. Go. Jurisdiction, supremacy clause, popular sovereignty, and federalism. Okay, and federalism. There we go. Jurisdiction, Supremacy Clause, Popular Sovereignty, and Federalism.
All right, so let's go over this jurisdiction. What is jurisdiction? What is that? What does that term mean? Go ahead, Lydia. All right, good job. So official power to make decisions and judgments. And uh, in certain cases, jurisdiction can be limited to the area that government, that local uh, government might have. Okay, so let's let's just create an example. New York City wants to try to create a law. Uh, outside of New York City, those boundaries, that state, that territory, right, uh, does, do they have any type of ability to make the laws for anybody in Philadelphia? No. Okay. So jurisdiction might end depending on well, where the grounds cover. Okay. What type of uh, boundaries that they might have. So let's say the city of New York City wants to make a law or make a, uh, a, a type of um, legislation for people to follow. Okay. The city in Philadelphia, they don't need to follow that, right? Their jurisdiction kind of ends at their city limits. All right. Good. Supremacy clause. What's that? Supremacy clause. Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good job. So the uh, Constitution, supreme law of the land, right? So that when you're looking at a set of laws that the national government has pushed out, the federal government has established, that proceeds that is superior to the state laws or local laws that might be established or set up. Okay? Good job. Good job. So supremacy clause, supreme law of the land, the Constitution. Okay? Popular sovereignty. What does that mean? What is popular sovereignty? What does that mean? Hold. Yeah, good job. So the people have the say of what the government can maybe establish or proceed with, right? Okay, good. So whatever decision the government has, it has to go through the people first. The people have to um, consent the government to make or establish a law or a regulation or any type of um, issue like that. Good. Good job. So that's popular sovereignty. All right. Federalism. Last one here. Federalism. Alex, what do you have, buddy? Yeah. Okay. Good job. So this is pretty much what we stated before with federalism. This is the separation of powers between local, state, and national level. Okay. That there is not a sole... You know, the national government is not solely making laws for the people that the state government, depending on their community, depending on their population, can set their certain laws or regulations that fit their people. OK, uh, it, it's a little bit different than just one overarching power creating legislation for the whole group of the people. OK, there's a separation of power of government, OK, uh, of government boundaries. Right. OK, is there any questions on that, guys? We good with that? All right. Today, real quick, I just want to go over two types of government that fall under what a, what a monarchy would be, okay? So one of them is going to be an autocracy, and the other one's kind of going to be a democracy, right? So we're going to discuss that and go over that here soon. Oh, let me pull up the PowerPoint. Okay, so we're going to talk about absolute monarchy and a constitutional monarchy today, but these are the types of government that I want to go over, which fall under the main types of government. So we already went over the main types of government today and yesterday, um, autocracy, democracy, and oligarchy. But uh, we're going to move on today with uh, discussing a little bit more of these subtopics, these branches of types of government, okay? So the first one, an absolute monarchy. What is an absolute monarchy? It is um, kind of going along the lines of the theory of government, that evolutionary theory, that the family kind of runs in line of leadership of government power uh, of that said country or that said state. Okay. So the absolute monarchy, a king or a queen, a noble person controls the land and the people fall under them. Okay. They make all decisions for that country, the king or the queen, the monarch, right? You guys remember the feudal pyramid? Do you ever go over that? What is the feudal pyramid, Lydia? Uh-oh. 
Oh, oh boy. Might as well just go over it, huh? Oh, they did that in your shit. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, first sure. day of school. <laughs> this year. First day of school, freshman year. Oh, we freshman year. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's so the absolute monarchy. Uh, this is uh, one person having full control of the kingdom, of the land, right? So monarchy is just usually set with family, right? The family would uh, be in leadership of governing power of that that country or kingdom, right? So the feudal pyramid, let's go over it real quick, right? It might not be set like Mr. Fight has it, but we'll, we'll get pretty close here. All right, so the top of the pyramid, who's that? Top of pyramid, who holds the, the top of it? It's just... Obviously, it's smaller than the rest, so it only is going to be one person, maybe a family. Go ahead. They had a king, a monarch, right? So I'll just say the king. I'll just put it a monarch because you never know. It might be a queen. Who knows? Okay, so a monarch. We'll put like a little crown up here. There we go. Screeching. <laughs> so we'll say the monarch at the top. King, queen, right? That, 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 uh, the family, right? So then next part here. Next part, what falls underneath the king? What falls underneath the king? Oh, Devin? The nobles. Yeah, the nobles, right? So the nobles would be kind of like the family, the wealthy uh, status. It might be princes. It might be dukes. It might be the family members that run and oversee the part of the land that they want to, uh, well, that they're controlling. Right, so the noble status, right? Good, good job. Nobles. All right, what's the next one here? What's the next one? Does anybody remember? Uh, this might be pretty tough here. Woodward, do you know? Ms. O'Neill? Yeah, okay, religious leaders, yeah, all right. So religion definitely took a toll in, in, in society, especially throughout the Middle Ages. They, they, uh, they were definitely a medieval time. So we say religious leaders, right? All right, we'll add that one in there. I like that, religious leaders. Okay, the Pope, okay, they kind of controlled over the whole land. They might even be up here sometimes in, in, in times of uh, you know, medi medi medieval or Middle Ages. Yeah, so we're going to say nobility, sorry. Yeah. Nobility. All right, what I was looking for here, knights. Okay, knights. So military leaders. So we're going to have our generals, right? Our people that control the, the military, our state, and, uh, and uh, maintaining some sort of social order. Controlling the people and making sure that there is no anarchy, no chaos. All right, our military, as we're expanding past our own boundaries, all right, our knights. Okay, the knights. All right, so next, we're going to say serfs, right? What are serfs? What are serfs? I don't know. Go ahead, Sarah. You know, like, the lower class, but they're not bound to, like, the workers, but they're not, like, yeah, good job. So in some case, they have some sort of rights within the land. They might be able to hold some, like a blacksmith, or they might be people that have some sort of occupation that helps benefit the society in some way. Okay? So they're not totally at the bottom of where, what's the bottom of it? Pheasants, right? Pheasants. <laughs> yeah, so peasants, too. Okay, peasants, which are pretty much people that almost work as slaves within the kingdom, within that uh, that said place. Okay, good, good job. And with that nobility, okay, I want to. So let's say this is the state. Let's say this is the kingdom. Okay, I don't know. It looks like this here. It's a pretty cool kingdom or state with some boundaries. So the king obviously would control it all. We'll just put him in the middle. And his nobility would be spread out, almost like lords, okay? So that kind of falls under nobility, the lords, right? Not only did this happen in Europe, but also in Japan, right? This was not just something that was occurring in Europe during the medieval times or Middle Ages. But I'm just going to put lords right here. They're smaller, but hey, they still have control. And this is like the dukes that we see in Europe at the time. So the lords spread out, and they have a governing body in a way that helps process and helps um, decide of different forms of legislation 
and uh, judicial issues, maybe something with disputes over civil disputes. They can control the land and help out the king in certain ways. So in a way, this is like a federal system almost, right? Right. So the, the power is almost divided amongst these lords to a point where they can assist the king in judicial and uh, legislative reasoning and even executive orders. But the king still has full say. They have absolute power. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? In a way, the lords controlling over the land might be like the individual states. So just something to maybe think about when you're looking at the monarchy here. But absolute monarchy, the, the uh, crown, the monarch, they have full control and power over the country. Right, good. Can we erase that? We good? Okay. All right. So I already went through this, guys. I mean, I already described it. So if you write notes down, you got it already. Okay. Today's absolute monarchies. Sway's land. Vatican City, Oman, and Saudi Arabia. So they're still absolute monarchies still today. Right? And it's almost like a form of dictatorship, but for the most part, uh, there, there is an absolute monarchy still present, uh, absolute monarchy still present in today's world. Next one, constitutional monarchy. Okay, constitutional monarchy is obviously a little bit different than an absolute monarchy. All right? This gives the people a set and written laws. Okay, it gives them their certain rights. It gives them a constitution to follow, right? So that the absolute monarchy, the monarch, they can't take control or take these rights away from these individuals. So they have a certain, a certain set standard of rights that cannot be taken away and that cannot be infringed on by the monarch, okay? So it's a little bit different than an absolute monarch because they don't have full control, right? They don't have full um, control of the, the, the country. So the first thing that comes first, well, the, the, the thing that comes first before the authority of the king or the monarch, the queen, is the Constitution. So that written set of laws comes first. Does that make sense, Lydia? Yeah. So that Bill of Rights that's granted to the people, right? The, this Constitution is given to the people. There are certain rights that the government, okay, the monarch can't take it away from them, okay? A lot different than an absolute monarchy. This power is a little bit, um, a little bit uh, controlled, right? The, the monarch can't just do or say and, and perform whatever they would want to do. Okay? These rights are given to the people so that they can't be infringed on by the monarch. All right, and then the people fall next here. All right, the biggest one. United Kingdom, okay, United Kingdom. Right, so at the time, they controlled a lot of uh, the world, 70% of the world in the 1800s, uh, late 1700s, and they're conquering a lot of land. They came to a point that their power is so uh, you know, absolute in a way that the people even thought, you know what, they have too much power. The monarch has too much say in government. So the people need some sort of rights given to them that can't be taken away. And that's where this constitutional monarchy comes about. And with New Zealand, Canada, Jamaica, uh, they still represent the monarch of England, the United Kingdom, as their own monarch, as their leader. Um, today, I really, I don't know what power Elizabeth II has. I mean, she's still the figurehead of the United Kingdom of England. So in cases of need, let's say World War II, or I know just recently with COVID-19, she made an, an appearance in a statement trying to uh, assure the people that they're doing the best that they can to try to provide safety and help them out in certain cases, okay? So, Queen Elizabeth II. Other constitutional monarchies, okay? We have Belgium, Japan, Spain, okay, Sweden. They're all constitutional monarchies, which is pretty cool, right? They're still around today, still around today. And with the constitutional monarchy with Great Britain, they have a parliamentary democracy as well. They, they have a parliament which makes and decides on different forms of legislation, okay, creating laws. Uh, maybe if it's going to war, they have like a set Congress. That's what parliament is, where they're deciding and making decisions for the government. Okay. So like I was saying before, the monarch in Great Britain and uh, United Kingdom and England, 
she really doesn't do too much, but for the most part, she addresses the nation in case in, in times of need and in times of uh, problems and problematic situations. Okay. Is there any questions on that, guys? We good? All right. So with the notes, you can use your uh, iPad as well. Use any materials that you can uh, you can help that can help you. Um, I want you to fill out this graphic organizer that I just posted to Google Classroom. And you're going to show the differences and similarities between an absolute monarchy and a constitutional monarchy. So let me pull that up right here for you. Right here. Oh, I missed the little bar here. You might have to draw that in. I'm sorry. My word, uh, my word uh, programs isn't the best here. I haven't been trained on it the best. Maybe we need a professional day on What do you think? <laughs> There you go. Yeah, we need a training on it. So absolute monarchy, constitutional monarchy. You know how to use this here. So go on the drawing app, obviously, and just maybe make a line here. I'm sorry. I missed it. But similarities would be in the middle. Differences, obviously, within Judge Circle. So it might be legislation. How does an absolute monarchy pass legislation? How does a constitutional monarchy pass legislation? Um, is there certain rights that are granted to one and not the other? Uh, what are similarities between these two types of monarchies? And that's what you're doing right now. Okay. Is there any questions on that, guys? Okay. When you're finished, you can work on a citizenship test. Again, that's due Friday. Devin, Alex, don't forget the current events. Okay. How about I set this due for tomorrow at the start of class? Tomorrow, start of class is 